Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. <clears throat> Today I'm going to give you the final flip through of my Use It Up journal, which is a 5x8 Dilutions journal. And I'll link the first part of this journal in the description box below. So, starting from where I left off last time, uh, this is a page where I was using up some black paint. I'd been doing some stenciling. So, I um, used some white paint over top and stenciled with new stencil I had. And this background is um, one I did on photo paper with. Um, distress oxide inks and then you wipe off the surface and you get this beautiful sort of watercolory background and you don't have that chalkiness on top of the um, stress inks so you use photo paper for it and it works really really well um, just explaining about my use it up journal if you haven't had one before basically it's where I put my excess paint or stenciling or clean my brushes off so the backgrounds can be all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Um, in case in point with this one, you can see the background I stenciled over the top. Found some cool collage papers from a flow magazine and then just chose a quote that I wrote out. This page is an interactive page. Um, it's inspired by the art, um, art by Mylene um, on the Creative Jumpstart from 2019. She made this gorgeous little house windowy thing and um, I decided I wanted to have a go at doing something similar so it was a really fun page to do. This is a page that I did for um, Scrap FX design team using some of their new stamps and stencils. Um, it was around Valentine's Day <laughs> so hence the theme and um, something funny I went on with the I stamped with stress oxides is what I did and the Posca pen didn't really like it so I don't know what's going on with that and I've found when I stamp with distress oxides I love it when it first happens and then the colors really fade down when I originally did it I had really bright pinks and blues and purples in it and they've really faded down over the, the months which is a little bit frustrating um, these two pages again were um, used up pages for neon paint you can see that here you can also maybe see some of the texture paste I just had some left over and I slapped it into the book just to add some extra texture um, I think actually I had I'd been doing this technique in another journal I had some left over so I put the texture paste onto this page and then cleaned off my spatula on this page uh, this is using the distress oxide sprays uh, over a black so I put down the modeling paste painted it all black and then sprayed over top and I like the effect but again when it first happens it's really really bright and it's died down the two images on this page are from James Luke Burke creative um, his stamp set this is his concept stamp set and I was playing with um, coloring and using color pencils which again is not a medium I use very often so I was quite happy with how it turned out this little ACT is one that I'm in an ACT swap with um, a friend in Melbourne called Kerry. So we challenge each other every two weeks to, to have a different type of ACT. Um, and we do it on playing cards. And this one was, the theme was, have a positive quote. And um, as I'm currently attempting to lose weight, uh, I liked this quote, it spoke to me. And while I know I'm never going to be this shape, it's, it's something to inspire to. <laughs> uh, this is an example of how interesting the backgrounds can be. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess of a page, but it came together in the end. So in the background, again, it was black paint. Um, I had some white paint left over, so I put that in. I try out a lot of new um, materials or products that I have in this paint. So um, I bought some iridescent paints from Prima. So I was trying those out in the background. Some unicorn paste, which is amazing. Um, it's got this gorgeous iridescent glitter through it. It's kind of like a, it's a gel medium with iridescent paint uh, glitter through it basically. So it gives you this sort of gloss look. This is about the time I also got the Dina Wakeley Collage Collective. So any little off cuts um, or bits that I liked, I'd sort of stick over here. This one of the pieces out of that and some of the hearts as well. Um, I really like that the sort of perfection is overrated because that 
sums up that page. This one was just me playing around with a painted background and just some mark making over the back um, and some of the new Flutterby Design foam stamps. Uh, the Tim Holtz photo booth strips. I'm trying to remember the name. This page was playing around with new stencils from Dina Wakeley and from Dusty Attic. I'm I was trying to get the white collage papers from Dina Wakeley to work and they're still not working for me. I have found that if I use gloss gel medium it goes a little bit more translucent um, and while I can still see the white it just wasn't sharp enough for me so I went back over the pencil. Um, it's not a page I'm particularly happy with but it, it is what it is. And I've just noticed as I'm going through this that um, the majority of this, the last few pages have actually been done in like the last month and a half. So I've had a bumper using it up at the end. I suppose that's because I'm doing the 100 day project that um, I'm creating a lot more backgrounds with used up paint and so on. This is a page that I will be, a few of these I've got um, process videos for, but I know there's definitely a process video for this one. This is probably one of my favorite pages I've done, particularly this year. Um, and it's playing with the Tim Holtz mic making stamp set that was released earlier this year. It's got some collage in the background, using lots of acrylic paints that were left over, um, Posca paint pens over the top, and uh, again, some of the Dina Wakeley Collage Collective and some of her washi tape. But I just really liked how it all went together. This is another page playing with... Where is it? That, this technique with the modelling paste. So this is a new um, stencil from Scrap FX and some of their chipboard. And again, put it through. This is a crackle texture paste and using the Distress Oxide sprays. And again, when I did it, beautiful bright colours. <clears throat> and they've just really, really dulled down. Down here and just up through here, I tried to put some mermaid marker over the top to brighten it up. And it's just sort of all soaked in. So it is a technique. Um, I'm still not 100% sure I like it or the effect, um, but uh, it, it's a good practice and it's something I can refer back to if it's I want to do something like this in the future. This page, again, is using the Dina Wakeley College Collective. Um, there's a page that's got lots of circles on it. I'm getting my scribble on with my Stabilo All Pencil. Um, in the next few pages, I think, I've been using a lot of the um, Finnebear Liquid Acrylics, which is this product. And it just gives a really beautiful translucent glaze over the, the top of normal acrylics and over collage medium. So you can sort of see how it's going together. I chose to do the background in this page. I had stuff on this page already, which is usually, there's usually brush marks and stuff in the background, so it's not a blank page. Um, I think down here you can sort of see some of those brush marks. So I usually um, go through and apply some collage and then put some paints over the top trying to tie it all together. So in this page on Instagram I'd seen some people using magenta and a turquoise colour with a little bit of the cheddar colour mixed in together. And I really loved the effect so I wanted to try it out with the colour combination to see if I could get it to work. And again, that's what this journal is really great for because there's no rules in it. If it sucks, that's fine. You've had a go. Um, but you can get some beautiful pages as well. Um, this page was using up, I'd been doing some Dilutions paints in the background for um, an art journaling class that I'm teaching um, to do the background of the notes. So I had excess paint left on my sponges, which I cleaned off into this page and sponged over the top. And I had these printables from um, Inky Quill, which I'm never really going to use anywhere else, but it sort of went with the background, the IT one um, background from Darkroom Doors, so I thought, why not put it all together? This one's really, really quirky, but I quite like it. I love this quote, put your positive pants on. And that comes from the Art by Mylene uh, sticker, whimsical sticker set. And this is the alphabet from there too. Her stamp in the background. And this cute little paper doll came from one of those Flow paper magazines. And I absolutely loved it, but I 
don't really have anywhere else to put it. But then I saw this quote and I thought it just went perfectly together. I was going to put a quote of, you know, the postman always knocks twice or rings twice until I actually, because I never watched the movie, looked up the uh, synopsis of it and didn't really have the same connotations as I thought it did. So I don't know if that says anything about me or the movie, but um, I thought this worked better. This is also a celebration page because this was me using up the very last scraps of my bubblegum pink from Dilutions because I've never actually used up one of those paints before. So that was a bit of a celebration. This page was again a mess of stuff in the background and I collaged over the top of it. Um, the collage pieces you can see in the background are actually from um, an art journaling class I taught over 10 years ago up in Canberra um, to the ACT stampers and shout out if any of them are actually watching. I had an absolute ball. It was a three day sort of weekend ret retreat and the pieces here was me showing them. We had to do like an introduction page and I found them the other day and I thought, oh, I have to include that into my normal art journal. So I tore them all up in the background and collaged over the top, put some gold foil in because I love that technique and then did some of the reductive painting using the Dina Wakeley Speak the Truth stamp set. This page I adore. Um, well, there was a page... It's, it's a tie up between these two pages, but I actually really, really love this page. Um, this again is collaged over the top, um, scraps from my Dina Wakeley Collage Collective using those um, liquid acrylics. And you can see you just get this beautiful glaze. It's brilliant for ghosting because you get really clear colours in the background, more so than if I use the heavy bodied acrylic paints. And this gorgeous fellow is from um, an old art journal calendar from 2004 from Somerset Studio which I have had sitting on my shelf for, well you can tell how long I've had sitting on my shelf and it was just a piece of eye candy I never actually wrote in it and I just thought no, it's time to actually start using it so he was he was the first victim but I just love how this came together and the quote is from Alice in Wonderland this is my dream I'll decide where I will go from here and I thought it kind of looked with his, his angry little face, but it's sort of all tied together. This page was inspired by in, uh, Mixed Media Jen, I think, who was inspired by Michelle Logan. So it's a, a, a double inspired page. Um, Mixed Media Jen on YouTube does have a, a, process, a short process video for an iCAD page that she did um, with a similar technique. And Michelle Logan on her Instagram page has a picture of a moon face where she sort of blacked out the background. I just really liked how it came together. Um, I don't use these moon faces and fa funny faces from Dina Wakeley very much, so I thought it was a great way to use them. And again, the background was a watercolour page I had where I was testing out my Jane Davenport Brights set from oh, at least a year ago. So it was, I just did it in the back of my journal so it was just sitting there so I just added a bit of extra mark making over top and then stenciled out the faces, blacked it out, did a bit of stamping in and chose choose to shine. So it was a really simple page but I really like how it came up. This is my final page and I've started, I'm never used to do the, the last page and I've certainly never gone onto this side of the page but I really like it and it's kind of become <laughs> bit of a tradition in my journals to actually do the last page just completely washi tape and one of the reasons is it's a really simple technique two it uses up lots of my washi tape because I like the washi tapes but I never use them but the third reason and particularly for this journal is by actually running the washi tape the full way across the page it actually just gives an extra strength to the the binding because you can actually see how chunky that journal is so that just sort of strengthens that binding up a little bit. So I know that hopefully that's a little bit more secure in there. The chipboard piece, I thought I loved. Don't believe everything you think because I need that reminder from now, now and again. And this is another cutout from that um, Somerset Studio um, diary that I had. So that's the end of my journal. Um, if you watched the first video, I would have explained about the cover. These are all printables from Little Raven Ink which I just 
um, covered my journal with, which I love, because I love her style, I love her mic making, and I print everything on sticker paper, so it was really quick to do. And the final little piece <laughs> is this. Um, while I was doing this, my 19-month-old daughter was watching me do it, and she was getting really annoyed that she wasn't able to do it, so I turned over here and gave her out some pieces of tape, and she decorated my front page for me, so that's a bit precious. Um, that's decorated by her and my journal. So that is the end of this journal. If you want to see the beginning parts of this journal, um, tune in to the link that's in the description box. And until next time, uh, bye for now.